All right, back on the conversation. Well, conversations with Republicans are oftentimes interesting. We're gonna have another one of those here. Um, Jamil Jaffer is gonna join us again. He was on the program before, it was spirited. Uh, he's the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. He's the former chief counsel and senior advisor for the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for the Republicans. And he was the former associate counsel to President George W. Bush. Uh, so Jamil, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Cenk. No problem. So. Uh, we had a story come out this week about from the Guardian about leaked documents from the Kremlin saying that they thought that Donald Trump was mentally unstable and that he would be helpful in destabilizing the country. The document called him impulsive, mentally unstable and an unbalanced individual who suffers from an inferiority complex, which sounds spot on, it gives me a little bit more respect for Russian intelligence. Um, okay, um, services. Uh, so Jamil, uh, first question uh, is, do you believe it? Do you believe the story? So Jake, you came in and out there. I think you said, do I believe the story? Yeah. Uh, look, I think that uh, it, it, it's it's hard to know, right? I mean, uh, this is an interesting timing of the leak. Um, uh, the, the document certainly captures uh, elements of Donald Trump that I think uh, that are gonna be hard to argue with. Um, but it is interesting that it came out you know, now, like why is this document coming out now? We've seen the Russians engage in all sorts of disinformation. It wouldn't surprise me, frankly, Jake, if this were another uh, you know, document from the Russians intentionally de designed to uh, misinform or disinform uh, the American public, uh, but you know elements of it read uh, like uh, you know like they're an accurate assessment of of the president. Yeah, well, it's it's refreshing to hear you say that, um, and and it certainly does. And and unfortunately, if the document is correct, or even if it isn't correct, um, it, it meaning like it isn't an actual document that there's somehow it's a trick, right? Uh, it does accurately yeah. describe what happened, uh, not just in regards to Trump, but they say Trump win could, or they said quote, will definitely lead to a destabilization of the US's socio-political system. And we've had destabilization, that's for sure. Uh, and so I'm curious as a Republican who worked in the Bush administration, are you concerned about um, documents like this that seem to indicate uh, that the Russians wanted to destabilize us and that they were actively working yeah, inside the country uh, to foment a uh, division between the left and the right. Yeah, Jake, absolutely. I mean, we've known this isn't the first document or, or evidence or suggestion that the Russians were acting to destabilize our country and destabilize our body politic. Uh, you know, we have an entire Senate Intelligence Committee report, bipartisan report uh, by, by Senator Richard Burr, Mark Warner. Uh, Democrat, Repu Republican, and Democrat, respectively, uh, that makes clear that the Russians were involved in 2016 elections. They were actively engaged. They intentionally decided to engage in activities, stoking multiple sides of the debate, intentionally to to create dissension, disagreement, and discord in the United States. And they were wildly successful, Jenk. I actually think that if, when we look back on this covert operation uh, that the Russians ran, this will be the most successful covert influence operation in the history of the world. I actually agree with that. So look, I wanna be clear, I've said this a hundred times on the show, but these documents also do not indicate that Trump ever coordinated with the Russians. It was just the Russians trying to use Trump to destabilize America. So we have to be fair on all counts. But it is also refreshing to hear a Republican say things that are obviously true to the rest of us, right? And so, and in terms of the destabilizing, um, it's, it's, they, they also talked, Jamil, about media viruses, that they could plant media viruses and that they could take hold and destabilize us in the long term. And as I see some yeah. in, the, in the extreme right wing and now the extreme left wing uh, constantly support Russia in over the top ways, in, in, in ways that the right wing never did. And and the left wing, I guess, hasn't done since the Soviet Union, right? And they're not communist anymore at all. They're hyper capitalists and oligarchs, etc. I wonder if those media viruses actually took hold. I think there's almost no question. I mean, you see the you know the the intensity with which we've been debating these issues now for the better part of you know going on five six years, um, and part of that debate is stoked. Yes, in the American media, right? The the on the left and the right. I mean, you know, you've got you've got you know 
uh, folks at MSNBC, folks at Fox News, uh, who, who come at these things from such extreme angles and actually say things like, "Oh, you know, we should really believe be believing the Russians." They stoke, uh, you know, dis, uh, discord in America about our own intelligence agencies, uh, about our government. Right? Is our government doing the, the right thing, the wrong thing? Look, our government does things wrong a lot of the time, right? It makes mistakes, it makes errors. Sometimes it does things intentionally that are problematic, right? And we need to vet those things out. But the 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 the, the amount of you know vigor in the media that the government's doing the wrong thing that 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 whether it's Democrats on one side or Republicans on the other are out for themselves and not out for the country and I mean it, that virus has certainly taken hold and it's been stoked by the Russians and increasingly I think we're seeing increasingly being stoked by the Chinese too in the in light of the COVID virus and since then. Yeah, well, so there I think we've got a little bit of a divergence in our opinion, right? So I think the politicians are out for themselves. I also think the media is out for themselves. And so I think that's that's pretty obvious. On the other hand, there when I say extreme right and extreme left, I don't even mean Fox News or MSNBC. I don't think, you know, well, certainly MSNBC. If MSNBC is extreme, it's extreme in its neoliberal support of the Democratic Party no matter what. But but they certainly hate Russia. I mean, I mean they think everything is Russia's fault. So that I think they're extreme in a different direction. Um, but um, but no, I'm, I'm talking about folks who now all of a sudden think Russia can't do anything wrong, right? And and but then furthermore say, hey, I want to hold the American government accountable. I'm not sure I want to hold the Russian government accountable. But when I hold the American government accountable, I'm now going to go to an extreme and say that everyone's CIA, everyone is like paid by NATO or with the nefarious forces. That it's not normal corruption. Like, oh, they takes a campaign contribution from Exxon Mobil and does what he does, you know, what Exxon Mobil wants. No, it's like, no, it's the deep state. It's the CIA. It's all these things, right? And the CIA does a lot of terrible things, but. This is getting like this conspiratorial view that is to the nth degree seems to have really taken hold. And so that's almost indisputable as you see the, the, the again, only the extreme right and, and left wing. But, but uh, Jamil, we might actually disagree also on, on what to do about it. So I wanna explore that. Yeah. So given that the, the facts are clear, right? The Russians did try to interfere in the elections. How effective it was, you can disagree about. Was Trump involved? I don't even think you can disagree about it. It doesn't look like Trump was involved. Um, you know, whether they had compromise on Trump is a different issue. Whether they use it while he was president is a different issue. But it looks like during the elections, right. Trump was not involved. Um, but, but okay. So what do you do about it? I mean, and here you're, a, you know, old school Republican, and, and so I'm curious. I don't know what you think. Yeah, look, I think I think Jenk, what you do about something like this is you got to punch back, right? You have to extract a cost from the Russians to demonstrate that you can't behave in this way, right? Look, we run intelligence operations in Russia all the time, right? We want to acquire intelligence from them. We want to figure out what their leaders are thinking. And yes, we engage in electronic surveillance of Russian leaders. By the way, if we're not doing that, we should just shut the whole thing down. So if you're an American journalist and you call the office of a Russian leader, Yes, you should expect to be picked up on surveillance, not a view of that Russian leader. That's what intelligence collection is about. Every country does it, that's what they're supposed to do. Now, it gets different when you start interfering in another country's own politics, right? And again, yes, the US government does that. We engage in covert action, that is a thing, right? But you can also expect that when you engage in covert action and it causes problems in the body politic and causes issues, that the other side might extract a cost from you. They might punch back. And that's what we haven't done effectively at all. We know what the Russians did. We know they've been doing it. We know they've been hacking us for years. We know that they're engaged in, in permitting these proxy groups to engage in ransomware hacking. We never punch back, Jenk. We don't hit back, we don't extract the cost. And if that happens, you can't really blame them for continuing to push back on us and continue to do these things. They're not paying any price. To the contrary, they're looking even more influential because it's great for them. Oh, The Russians interfered in American elections, they caused dissension. This is a win for them. And we're sitting around doing nothing about it. It's crazy. Well, okay. Of course, the question is, how do you punch back? So let me, um, I hope, get rid of the extremes, and then we'll see. We'll probably still disagree on the middle. Uh, but so surveillance: should we surveil uh, the Russian government and their intelligence agencies? Of course, that's the whole point of having an intelligence operation, right? right? So that that we agree on. Right. Now, when it gets to recording calls of Americans, that gets dicier. Tucker Carlson says that his phone. Or his communication was intercepted because they were surveilling one of the top Russian officials. 
Uh, you know, I would hope that our media doesn't get dragged into that. So I don't like that his conversation was caught. But I get that they were, of course, surveilling the the Russian official, right? So, right. but right. that's relatively easy. I, can I get you to agree that we should not use military force here? Because that, to me, that's a no brain. No way I would use military force. They're a nuclear power, and that's way too extreme, in my opinion. Do you agree with that? Well, you know, Jake, that's a little bit harder one. Because I think it depends on how far they go, right? If they were, you know, affecting votes in America, right? I mean, at some point, you have to say, look, you've crossed a line that requires us to act out militarily. Are they have they crossed that line yet? I don't know. But what I can tell you is, they've gone so far that without any penalty. I mean, we've engaged in some sanctions, limited sanctions. You know, the President Trump likes to say he's the toughest president on Russia. Fine, yes, his administration imposed sanctions, right? Great, hallelujah, right? It obviously didn't work because the Russians are still doing it, right? And Joe Biden is sitting around here saying, well, you know, look, I'm really concerned about this ransomware, right? We're gonna respond in a time and place of our choosing. You know, everybody knows what that means. It means you're not gonna do anything about it, right? It, it's just like with the bully on the playground, Jenk. And I know we all tell our kids, hey, you know, go call the go call the principal and have a conversation with the parents. But the reality is, if you want your kids to be not be bullied on a playground, just like you don't want your country to be messed with in international relations, you gotta punch the bully in the face and you gotta do it so everyone sees it. I'm not saying he needs military force, but at some point you gotta have that on the table, otherwise you don't have a credible threat. Yeah, this is where we fought last time because you're old school neoconservative. Hell no, no way on military force. No way, no how. That's a super dangerous game to play. And and and, and I, I don't wanna get 1% of the way there. Uh, and in sanctions, we, we've run out of time, unfortunately, because this is an interesting conversation. But I, I would not do it on the Russian people. It's it's counter effective, counterproductive, and it's, in my opinion, immoral. But what I would do is I would freeze the assets of uh, the Russian oligarchs. Because that's actually the one law that in the infamous meeting with Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner, that's the one law that they were most concerned about when we froze their assets. And that's the one law they were trying to overturn uh, desperately because it's their assets. They don't give a damn about the Russian people, yeah. but they care about their money. So if yeah. I could, I would, I would, that is the one way that I would strike back by freezing the assets of the, the powerful. Uh, people inside the Russian yeah. government and the oligarchs. Do you, do you at least agree with that? 100%, Jenk. In fact, you know what we should do is we should go much more aggressive. In fact, when I was working in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, one of the things that uh, we put out was a bill called the Russian Aggression Prevention Act. It was uh, it involved their, their uh, involvement in Ukraine when they went across the border and took Crimea. One of the things we said we should sanction is not just the assets of the individuals, but these huge companies they control, Gazprom, right, Roost Bank, right, all these massive entities. We could prevent them from doing business here. We could seize their assets, right? That would actually be a huge penalty for these these oligarchs to control its money. We weren't willing to go down that road, you know. VSB Bank, right? There's a whole ton of these organizations. We actually list them out in the legislation. I think that would be a great effort um, if we went after those assets directly. I think that's exactly right. You know, you and I might disagree on on sanctions. I also think we do disagree on military force because I believe you got to keep it on the table to have an effective deterrent. I know we disagree. We're not going to argue. We're not going to. We're not going to agree on that one. You know, look, and I do have to say, at some point, there are only so many assets you can freeze. We haven't done all of them, so you're right, we can still do more. But at some point, you run out of those, and then you gotta say, well, what comes next? No, nothing comes next. Uh, no, we're not gonna keep uh, military options with a nuclear power on the table, besides which is immoral. Uh, and so, I, yes, we definitely disagree. And I don't want sanctions on the Russian people. They didn't do anything wrong. They were also suffering under Putin. Uh, and the oligarchs and the and the authoritarian government, uh, but but the easiest way to hit uh, anyone is in the pocketbook, and and don't hit the pocketbook of the Russian people. Hit the pocketbook of the Russian oligarchs, uh, and I would think that almost the whole country could agree to that. But there are media viruses, and so I'm not sure the extreme right or extreme left would even agree to that. They might say, "No, our beloved Ru Russian leaders are always right, and we should you know, should never touch them." Uh, so, but that's up to them. Uh, all right, Jamil, this was a surprisingly um, agreeable conversation, even when we disagreed, which was still significant. Uh, all right, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. We really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.